Here it is guys, this is the brand new Firepower 1010 security appliance from Cisco. I just got this in last week, I've been playing around with it, and I wanna give you guys an overview and a demo of what this box can do. So, a couple things we're gonna go over today. Number one, I'm gonna give you guys an overview of this box, talk about what it is, what it's replacing, features of this box and everything. Flip it around, show you guys the ports on the back like I always do, and then I wanna go into and show you guys how to get this thing up and configured initially to get you guys started. So there's a new web GUI that comes with these things, it's on box management. Um, you can still hook these things into Firepower Management Center, uh, but it also has an on box GUI. So if you're just managing one or two of these things, you know, you can do it right from the box. So with that, let's get started. Okay guys, so let's talk about what this box is and talk about some of the features on this thing. So first and foremost, this is the replacement to the 5506 and the 5505 firewall. So if you guys had those in your environment and you're looking for something new, this is the replacement. It's a 650 megabit per second firewall. And there's two cool things that we kind of brought back from the 5505. The first being the layer two switching. I know you can kind of get that to work in the 5506s with some creative programming, but it's now native inside the box here again, like the 5505. And then the other one is the power over ethernet capabilities. And a lot of people were hurt that that wasn't in there um, on the 5506 release, but again, brought that back. I will mention on the POE side of things though, on the initial release of this box, uh, they're not, it's actually not active. So there will be a software update coming out very shortly here. So if you're watching this video after like December of 2019, let's say, um, there probably is a software update available. Get that software update and your POE ports to start working. So just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that before you go to plug something in, it doesn't power up and you think you got a bad box. It's just a software thing. And like I said, it's coming. Uh, so like I mentioned, this is a 650 megabit per second firewall has a lot of the same capabilities and features of all the rest of the firewalls that we that we have. So it's got the next generation IPS built in. It's constantly getting that feed from Cisco Talos. It's got your application visibility and control functionality built into here as well. It has AMP built in. As files come in through this box, we take a look at it. We send hashes to the cloud and alert you of any odd behavior or files that we see that uh, may be risky. It's got the URL filtering built inside of here as well. Um, VPN capabilities, so obviously we can do site-to-site -site VPNs. Uh, we could also do any Connect VPNs on here. Uh, we could do about 75 sessions on this box. So again, could be good for a small office, could be good for a branch office where you have people coming in remotely over any Connect. Um, just not gonna have the scale of the bigger boxes, but if you need the bigger boxes, obviously those are, those are all available as well. As far as management of this thing, so we still have Firepower Management Center, and if you guys are managing two, three, four, five plus boxes, you know I'd still recommend you guys go down that route in order to manage these things and monitor them. But there is an on-box option now, which is Firepower uh, Device Manager, or FDM. So that's what I'm gonna basically show you guys today is just the on-box management on here. I figured that's probably the best thing to show you, especially if you're just buying one for the first time, wanna play around with it, wanna see what the capabilities are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this around, I'm gonna show you the ports on the back, point out where everything is, then we're gonna go into FDM and I'm gonna show you guys how to get this thing configured. And actually, before we move to the back of this box, I do want to show you guys the front. I know I got called out in my first look video when I was at Cisco Live. Someone said, hey, you're showing the back of this thing, but what does the front look like? So I want to make sure I gave you guys a close-up of this box so you could take a look at it. Uh, it, is, it is a nice looking box. It's probably one of the nicer looking boxes that I've ever seen from Cisco. It's got this front on it. It's kind of a matte finished uh, front here, none of the letters or anything sticks out. It's all printed on design. And then it's got this little bevel underneath that I think is for um, just ventilation. It looks like it has some ventilation holes underneath it. So if you're questioning what the front of this box looked like, there it is. So let's turn it around and actually show you guys the back and go through all the different ports and everything on it. So let's start over on this side, and you've got your power plug right there. You know, nothing, nothing special. And then we'll talk about the eight Ethernet ports that are on here. So these are your main ports, and the way this thing is actually set up out of the box, port one 
is sort of your WAN port. So if you plug in a connection there from your provider, it's actually going to pull DHCP. Uh, two through eight are just regular LAN ports on this. They will give an IP address out. So that's how this thing is set up initially. You will get an IP address on the 192.168.1.x network. And then port seven and port eight right here, those are your PoE ports for power. They are PoE plus ports. You'd be able to pull 30 watts of power out of those two ports that are right there. Uh, after that, you've got your management port. The management port is going to, again, give you a DHCP address on the 192.168.45 network. It should give you .46 and above. Uh, and then underneath that, you've got your console port. And then you also have your USB console port. So, you know, much easier than pulling out the big dongle and all the rest of this stuff. You could just simply use a USB mini connector now or a micro, whatever, whichever one that is. Next to that is a regular USB port. That's for software upgrades. If you want to plug a software upgrade stick in here, you can. Uh, above that, we've got a Kensington lock for you. So if you're trying to you know, lock this thing down, maybe it's in a retail setting, it's going to be underneath a, a POS terminal, something like that. Um, you know, It's going to be out in the open. You can lock this box down. And then the last thing on the bottom there is the reset button. So guys, that's what this box is. I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to show you guys how this thing gets initially set up. The big thing to note when you guys get this thing out of the box, and I've, I've talked to people at Cisco about this a little bit too, this thing takes a while to boot, okay? So don't get frustrated if you plug this thing in and you try to connect to it after like five minutes and it doesn't work. Give it. 40 minutes and if it's still not up in 40 minutes you might want to just wait an hour to make sure that the thing is booted that's only on the initial setup of this thing after that after it's all set up and everything you know the reboots and everything are what i would consider probably typical you know for cisco probably under 10 minutes or, or so but there is a long delay when this thing gets set up you might see some funky things with the lights going on if you have cables plugged in and if you unplug a cable the light might still be on you might get ip addresses from different networks it's it's a little weird getting set up i just want to let you guys know that so if you run into that there's not a problem with the box just give it a little bit more time for the initial setup so let me plug it in and i'll show you guys and i'll walk you through getting this thing set up for the first time there's two ways now to get into Firepower Device Manager. You can either plug into the LAN ports on the front of the box, or you can go into the management port on the box. If you go into the LAN ports, you're going to browse to 192.168.1.1 because that's the network that you're on. If you plug into the management port, you're going to need to browse to 192.168.45.45. I'm plugged into the LAN ports right now, so that's why I'm at 1.1. Now to log into the box, we're going to log in with the default username and password, and that's admin, and admin123, the password has a capital A in admin, so it's capital A, D, M, I, N, 1, 2, 3, and that should let us inside the box here. Typical Cisco EULA and user license agreement, accept it, make sure you read it, you should always read these things. And we need to go in and we need to create a new password for the box. So first you have to type in the old password, which is admin123 with a capital A. And we're going to create our new top secret password here. And once you have that done, then we click change. Now when you log in, so this is the wizard that becomes available to you. And just a quick setup of how the box is is set up initially here you've got your your wan port there where i actually have it plugged in then it's got your lan ports there you should you can see that i'm plugged into 1.5 or 1 slash 5 here and it says that i'm getting out on my 1.1 port and i'm getting dns ntp and we're going to be contacting the smart licensing server as well to pull in any licenses that you have out here so here's some information on the way that this firewall is set up initially again, right? So here's rule one, trust outbound traffic, default action, block all other traffic, basically. This is how this thing is set up out of the box. 
So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say configure IPv4 using DHCP because again, I'm just showing you guys how this thing is set up initially here. DNS addresses, you know, those are all in there as well. You can change the host name if you guys want. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click next. You can use the open DNS IP addresses. That's actually what those, those are in there. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. So once that's once you hit next on the bottom of the last page there, this might take two minutes or so to get to this page here. This is basically where we're gonna set our NTP settings. So I'm just gonna change mine. Click on New York for me. We're gonna go ahead and stay with the default NTP servers. I'm just gonna show you where it's pulling that NTP information from here. And we'll click next again. Okay, so this is where we start getting into smart licensing. And if you guys don't know what smart licensing is, it's it's a it's basically the portal that now holds all of your licenses. So in the past, Cisco has done these product activation keys. Uh, everything was kind of siloed on its own. You get a key from Cisco, you copy it, you paste it, you upload it into your device, and that feature is active. Now, all, almost all of our boxes are actually talking to the smart licensing portal on Cisco.com, and we get our information from there. If you don't have a smart account or you didn't purchase any of the um, additional features like AMP or URL filtering or any of that, and you don't want to hook up into your smart account, you can you can bypass the smart licensing. Um, the base license that comes with all the firepower appliances is, is fine. That, that'll get you started. It'll give you your common features like your, your normal firewalling features, NAT, you know, things like that. You just won't have URL filtering, AMP, IPS, things like that you, won't, you guys won't have access to. So I'll show you guys how to get the smart licensing set up if you're using it. If not, just skip through it. So to get this box registered to smart licensing what we're going to do is we're going to click this link here and it's going to open up software central and we need to create a token to plug into this box we're going to click on new token here i am going to do firepower 1010 demo box give it a description the token is good for 30 days you could do it for one day i'm going to end up revoking this token at the end of this just in case you guys are watching and try to write down this token but we're going to create it here and it tells you that a new token was created successfully. We see our new token right here. I've got Firepower 1010 demo box. If you click this blue link there, it allows you to copy the entire token. And then we can just go back to Firepower Device Manager and paste the token in there. Scroll down to the bottom. Um, you can also see here, if you don't have a smart account, you can just click the start 90-day evaluation period, and you can use some of the features if you want, if you want to test them out. You could also do this after the fact. You can enable some of the features once you're, once you're beyond the initial setup here. So I'm going to add this to my smart account. We're going to click Finish on here. I guess it's important to note, too, that you need to actually have a license in your smart account for this to be able to register and pull in licenses. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Now it pops up and just says, okay, the device is ready to be configured. So like I said, there's an initial configuration that's already loaded on the box. We can go in here and we can take a look at what that is. And we can make changes if we need it. We can either click on this or we can exit out of it completely and just go in and start playing around with the, with the main GUI. So I exited out of it, and as you guys can see here, it just gives me a big high-level view of what's going on with the box here. Right now we're under device firepower at the top. I can scroll down here, take a look at uh, some of the features on here. So obviously routing is not configured yet. We haven't done any of that. We can go in and take a look at our interfaces if we wanted to, take a look at smart licensing. And we've got some of those features here. System settings, you want to go over how your DHCP is set up in this box, change the NTP, you know, some of the stuff that we configured already in the initial setup. You can do that all right here. We could also click on the monitoring at the top and we could take a look at CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, um, and then take a look at some other features on here. So guys, again, this was just meant to be a high level, hey, how do I get this box set up? What does this box do? 
um, we you know we can do more videos if you guys if you guys want it on how to set up AMP or what does URL filtering look like or how do I set this box up further. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, please subscribe to my channel and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot.